Hey, what are you doing here, you lazy sack of fur? Hey, um, who are you? All right, is this better? I'm looking for you, since you didn't show up to do any more keys after last episode. You clearly didn't watch it. I'm finished. We got Keystone Master, so I am enjoying myself in a well-earned vacation. You didn't finish anything yet. Keystone Master is not enough to end the journey. What do you mean? The other guy only had to do KSM too. You are a disgrace, son. Dad. You just abandoned your duty now. How can you be so disrespectful? No, only to me, but towards your mother. My baby boy is a quitter. I thought I raised you better, Joe. It's okay, Bernadette. It's not your fault. Wait, Mom. Since when are you showing up? Get your ass back to work, Joe. Time a plus 20 key, like your duty demands it. But that was rough. Yeah, no kidding. Your mom's name is Bernadette, dude. Hey, guys. It's Kusi. The seventh episode already, and we still got some room to improve. I did a bunch of keys in this fortified setting and we gained a lot of rating and some really useful items. Spoiler, we are talking best in slot. Let's quickly remind everyone where we stopped in the last episode. Item level 431, a dungeon score of 2121, added 19 under rod in our pocket. With that in mind, let's dive in. If I tell you that I already tried to do this 19 under rod, you have no idea how long I tried. At a certain time, I assumed it's because of my rating that no one would apply, so I made the decision to boost up my rating first. Two specific dungeons I had only done in Tyrannical, Netherus and Netherian Slayer, so doing those would bump up the score quite a bit. With that, I spam queued for those two in order to get them done ASAP, so I could focus on pushing my own key again. It took me probably 25 minutes, but with sending cheeky messages along my applications, I finally got invited. And to everyone's surprise, including me, it was a Ned Durant's Lair 17. Joining other players' dungeons can always be a coin flip and a half, especially considering that they actually took me with them. Luckily, this group was actually solid. I really start to enjoy the augmentation invoker, because not only do they boost the damage of the DPS players, but also the tanks. And if you have a prod pattern with you, that damage increases a lot. Now, even though this is a 17, the dungeon itself really went without events. Matter of fact, the only death we had was a tank dying to spike tongue on Naraxos. Even the trash leading up to Dargul and the final boss himself didn't seem much of a problem for us. We ran through this dungeon by two chesting it, granting us a whooping 114 rating, bumping the score up to 22-35. Next up was Ladaros, but I was queuing for this a lot longer, which led to me expanding my search to keys below 50. I take any score at this point and I won't get tired of telling you about those two trinkets. And we finally got invited, in 2 and 11. Now haters might say we are way past 11 keys, but you take what you can get at this point. Also no bolstering yet, which makes pugging a bit easier. Again, nothing worthy to mention happened, so we skipped towards the last boss. No deaths to our name, and yet still only 8 minutes to time it. We know that we either have been lacking on the chain usage or just overall damage. But we timed it, all that matters. And it didn't end there. Look at that beauty. Finally a trinket I can enjoy using instead of that as enough fragment we still had. For dungeons this is one of the top 3 trinkets to use for elemental shaman, so I'm a happy boy. Also 50 rating, so we are at 22.85. I honestly felt really confident this run, which turned out to be a bad thing. Because now I tried to go for my underworld again. But then someone from my guild told me that lowering it to 18 and then 2 chesting it would be a better play than to sit on the 19. I was slightly confused about this, but then one thought came to mind. People who want to farm gear most likely either do 17s or 20s, because of the threshold of the items that drop. And when you're looking for 17s in a dungeon browser, it also shows you 16s and 18s along with it. So I lowered it to 18 and just send it. What could go wrong, am I right? The tank queued with a friend in form of a drake but he willingly swapped to heal after we had no one applying as healer. The second time we had such a nice guy. Maybe I should consider multiplaying healer too. I also invited two demon hunters, which led us to having no combat rest, but my thought process was more about finishing it. I assume demon hunters farm this because of the one handed weapon, and the tank wanted to help his friend out, so in my mind we are at least finishing this. But turns out, besides the absolute ridiculous boss room of the second boss on Fortified, nothing really rose up to be an issue. One extra pack to ensure Lust will be ready on Crackmore, and then we just send it. Our Demon Hunter brothers made this boss just a little bit sketchy with their positioning, but at least those buggers are fast on maggots. Also I learned from last week, I went on maggot duty as well. The third boss also pretty much got played to perfection. Everyone adapted pretty good with every new upheaval, 
so no shrooms were left to harm us anymore. At this point, I'm feeling very excited. Will we actually two chesting this, like the guildmate told us? The last trash pick of the dungeon turned out to be a cramp of a fight. Because of all the melee in the tight area, people were standing all over the place. So not only did I need to dodge the tentacles, but also almost every maddening gaze came towards me. There was a leg workout for sure. Now the last boss, with almost 5 minutes to do what we wanted, I was hyped. Only thought that came to mind is, don't mess this up Joe. And everything went fine. No deaths on the last boss. We also got extra 16 rating and a leg piece that is a nice upgrade. For this one we received a 20 more dex pinnacle, which I was hyped about for a second but then I realized the amount of unhealthy things that trash packs in there do to you. But because we finished that underworld key at 1.30am, I was heading to bed and was ready to attempt the 20 on the next day. 20 pinnacle, our first 20 is the one dungeon we did about 20 times in the first 2 weeks, so that means we at least know what to do. Or so I thought. Watching this back, I really should have done a lower key to warm up a bit and not fully send it right away, because I often caught myself being unsecure on what to do. Right in the beginning, I think what would have helped a lot was to lust the first pull in order to save some time. Those mobs just take ages to kill otherwise. And if you wonder how we already have 3 deaths this early in the dungeon, then let me tell you this isn't the end of it. Here I chose to lust them in order to make one of the bigger mob groups a bit easier. At those mobs, I already regretted the setup I invited. A boomkin or tank demon hunter will help everyone in here with AoE silence. Sadly, I didn't invite either, so we had to deal with the extra struggle. But I chose the Shadow Priest at the end, mainly because of the item level, but also because there's a second power infusion. But turns out, I probably received the eye like 4 times over the dungeon, since they also didn't coordinate that. And here's where I was absolutely certain we won't time it. I think our healer had 4 out of 5 deaths so far, just by standing in everything there was. And here I was certain that someone is going to leave. I was mind blown that people applied for 20s not knowing the basic thing on the dungeon. It looked like our healer kept all of the cooldowns for next dungeons, because when the breath came, he or she just flopped over. The whole point of baiting the breath into one side of the circle is to move to the other side of the circle. If you move out, you don't receive the extra healing and you're gone. Just look at my HP bar. The reason why it's so high compared to the others is, not only did I stay in the circle since the fight started, I also used the damage reduction to lower the incoming damage. Shadow Priest died with the spurs available and Pala could have even bubbled before the debuff was even applied. We somehow managed to kill this one, but again the healer just stood outside of the circle with the debuff going. Usually I'm someone that is rather calm because of the usual, oh maybe they never done it. But when you're applying to the 20 key, this thought shouldn't apply. Slowly but surely we made our way to the second boss, which was a nightmare for me. On such a high key, the dot you get just really hurts, so every second you spend with a red debuff is a second too much. Also on this boss, I found out that I don't have any heal portions on me, which is a no-go as well. Those things could have saved Joe's fluffy ass multiple times. Somehow we did manage to kill it without fully wiping. But now came the actual hard part of the dungeon. The executor's crashing stone is so insanely lethal that it needs to be your main target on boss swing for sure. We even wiped here because it was just too much damage incoming. But now this pack, easily the hardest pack in the season and absolutely lustworthy. Besides the obvious lightning lash you want to avoid, the two executors are the actual issue. Again, with the crashing stone, but also because both will attempt to buff their allied HP by 50% with a rallying cry, you really should kick. Unfortunately, the tank had the mobs a bit too close to the lightning pyramid, which led to a lot of my abilities just not landing on the target. But the last boss at least is no issue because, ah no, we wiped that too. Even though we got rid of the debuff that Bloodlust provides, it doesn't reset the cooldown on the actual ability, so we couldn't use it in that fight. At least now it's up, so we went again to kill it, but not without the healer dying again to static link. I don't know if you guys saw it, but at some point I put out the healing meters too. But then I remembered I have no idea on how much healing is good in given situation. So this was our first 20 experience. There's a good chance we wouldn't have timed it, even without the deaths, due to some lack of damage here I feel like. But I was still upset that people joined other keys and just die in every given situation because they either forget or maybe actually don't know. It's one thing to die to a lack of healing because maybe the person is overwhelmed and that's totally okay, but having like 10 deaths to avoidable things is not really a good thing to do, at least on that level. But maybe I was just a bit emotional after hyping myself up and ultimately fell short. Unfortunately, I found myself in the same situation as with my hunter. The lack of death cooldowns on enchantments is disturbing. And because everything thrown at me almost killed me, I was certain that I might still need a bit more gear in order to be more durable. From that pinnacle I received a 19 letters, which if you remember, I only done on fortified early on 11. So this is a boost to score and also a potential item. So I lowered it to 18 again and started the group. Now in this run, a couple of things changed. First, we bought heal potions, or rather crafted them also. 
Then we also updated all of our add-ons, which I didn't do for weeks. And also, we made a couple of changes to our base Shaman talent tree. We rocked with the new abilities like Bird Walker's Grace, which lets us cast while walking for 15 seconds, Nature's Swiftness, which makes one of our next casts instant with a 1 minute cooldown, and Totemic Recall, which resets the latest totem we use. This one we want to use with Liquid Magma Totem for sure. And the cool thing is, all of those abilities are also affected by Flash of Lightning. Also, we swapped out Gust of Wind for Spirit Walk, which just helps us to deal with Entangled even better. Another thing that has changed is, with the newer version of details, you can now see how much impact dungeon including weapons have such as the chains and net mirrors for example. This one was something else. The druid was so well geared that he just healed himself for 100k HPS all the time. He did some big pulls onto the chain racks and look at what the chains are doing. 36 million damage on that pack alone and only two of us actually took the chains. I always knew they hurt but this is insane. After the second boss it was chain time again. But I made a mistake here. I didn't expect the druid to actually go this ham on the pole. So when I grabbed the chain the mobs were already out of reach. As you might expect, the run went really smooth. Besides the occasional deaths that potentially happen here with some bad RNG, we just floored everything in our way. The last pack however got a bit spicy. Because the tank decided to pull those together, which is a tough one to play. Our druid died in the process, which led to me quickly pulling on my running boots and kite like a big boy. No full wipe, that is all that matters. Almost 6 minutes to 2 chests is still, and I was already certain that I will get another plus 20 key after this. And after killing the boss, I checked the trash count. Luckily we had 3 minutes to kill one more trash mob, so no problem. Unfortunately I didn't get anything from here, so I wished everyone good luck on their vault and then left. But while fighting the last boss, my guild lead whispered me and asked if I wanna join their key as well. They also had an 18 Neldorus, and even though I just did that, I'm still craving the trinket, so I said yes of course. Also by doing this key, I will have 7 dungeons done this week with 16 or above from the vault. And by doing one more after this one, I would be at 8 out of 8. But this run didn't go anywhere near as smooth as the last one. While the Guardian Druid in our last run was more like this dude, Trollio in this run was more like this. And of course I die on the first pull when I'm with guildmates. I thought our tank would pull the mobs back and that I'm safe there. But then he turned around again which led to the cleave just blasting right into my face. And of course, I die after using all my cooldowns and lust right away. Classic. Though I felt like this run mainly didn't go as smooth because of the lack of chain usage, it was also things like this here. Where we let two casts go through for two fire elementals to rise. But because this is a third net there was in this episode, I won't bore you with much of it. Other than us wiping again here, the pull was absolutely manageable if the tank dragged them a little bit closer to the chains. After that, we somehow managed to kill the third boss with only 3 people and without a healer. And with the key obviously not being timed, we finally killed the last boss. To a pleasant surprise for your boy. Not only did my guildmate pull out the spoils of Neltarus, but I also got the erupting spear fragment. Because this thing always gives crit and is on a shorter cooldown than the spoils, this is the trinket for Mythic Plus for us. And by being hero, we can upgrade the sucker to 441, which I did instantly. So even though this was a messy run, it was worth for sure. Also for your pleasure, here are those two 18 Neltarus compared in terms of external weapon damage. And by finishing our 7th dungeon this week, we got one more dungeon to go. We timed the Neltarus by plus 2, which means we get a new plus 20 key before the reset. Brackenheit. I absolutely hate Brackenheit. If you think the first boss on Tyrannic goes rough, think again. With bolstering and fortified, all the mobs that just randomly attack people either by gazing them, just shooting them, or casting on them, do so much damage. It's not even funny. Five, so I made five, sure that this four, group is a lot more four, experienced eight, than the other. Three, two, three, you start one. the dungeon off by pulling a bit more and then lusting it, which led to me dying on the gaze rather quick. Considering we had those 1 or 2 deaths on almost every pull, I was already worried that this won't be it either. Breaking up 12 deaths before the first pulls already, again, some things happen here that I don't understand. We had two paladins and a hunter in our group, so the damage from the first boss should be absolutely manageable. The micro butchery cast should mean no harm when you have three people that have the ability to just not get hit, and also two blessings of protection in case a player like me, who doesn't have an immunity, gets hit by it. So why on earth does the healer die here with blessing of protection being available? At least that was the only bad part about the first boss, so we quickly made our way towards the second. Another 3 deaths on the board, we made rather short work of 3 mouth. 
On the third boss, the tank decided to take the bear and the birds into the fight, which for some reason worked out a lot cleaner than I expected. Because we added a bit too much there, we wiped again and with that our remaining hope got crushed. But turns out, even without the wipe, we were too late already. And we also needed trash after killing the boss as well. At least this one went a bit better than the Vortex Pinnacle run, so there's some progress here. And with this, a yet another exhausting run, we end our 7th episode. While having a stacked vault with 3 options, all either 447 or upgradable to 447, we can call it a successful week. Also, with the current dungeon score of 2388, we might as well get Keystone Hero before timing a 20. What a bummer that would be. By the way, I wanted to appreciate the support you guys showed me on the last video. Over 50 likes is such a ridiculous thing to me. Thank you very much for coming back and taking part in our boy Joe's journey. And for those of you that are still watching, I got a little gift for you. When recording this, it was already reset, so here's the vault just for you. If you're still here, comment what a vault in the comments. And as always, I wish you the most fantastic day whenever you watch this, and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.